everybody, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be reviewing Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So a brief synopsis, Katie, a girl from Florida, is moving to West Virginia with her mom after the death of her father, and she moves next door to this family, and right now the family is just a brother and sister, and they all are, look too perfect, you know, there's something a little bit off about them. And yeah, that's basically all I want to tell you without getting into the spoilers. So if you like this book, go ahead and read it and then come on back to the video. And before we get into this book, make sure you like, comment, and click that subscribe button. So one of the things I always remembered about this book was how sassy Damon and Katie were. Like they always had that little back and forth banter and it was always real cute and you could always tell like there was something more like it was very like witty and like cute. And so he calls her kitty cat and then we're like oh my goodness because not 10 pages earlier it's like her dad had called her kitty cat and I was like oh my god that's love is already meant to be. Okay, so Katie first meets Damon when she has to go across and ask for directions to the local grocery store. And he is so rude because her mom wants her to make an effort at making friends. And so she goes over to ask Damon, where's the food store? And he is such a jerk to her. He is so rude and he gives her no explanations. And she's like, yeah, make an effort, they said. And, and in my head I'm like, ah, make an effort, they said. It'll be easy, they said. So then we get to Foo Land, also known as Food Land without the D. And while Katie is shopping, she runs into D, and D's like, "Oh my God, hello! Damon told me you existed, but like I didn't know that." And D is Damon's sister, and so I was like, "Hmm, not gonna lie, this was very Alice Twilighty," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is crazy!" But at the grocery store, this kid is walking, is like running and playing in the in the aisle and then his mom goes up to me and grabs him and is like you know you don't you're not supposed to be around their kind while she's looking at Dee and, and Katie's like what in, in the world is going on like why is she so mean what did Dee do and then like there's like this creepy guy like lurking and then like torrential downpour comes out of nowhere so then after that experience at Fulan Dee and Katie continue to plant flowers in the flower bed and Damon is like you're not good enough for my sister. Like, and Katie's like, um, excuse me, sir, who are you? What did I do to you? Can you calm down? And he's like, you're just, you're just not as good as us. Like, Dean needs to be with people that are like her, and you're just, uh, you're like the plague. And I was like, oh, that's so mean. Because Damon's a jerk, D makes him help be nice to Katie so that he gets his car keys back because D took them. And then he's like, I'll help you wash your car because Katie is struggling. She, like me, is vertically challenged and she cannot reach like the hood of the car. So he has to help. So he helps her like clean the hood of the car and he's also like, I'm gonna take you swimming. And then I'm like, <gasps> it's the swimming scene. She puts on the red swimsuit and they go into the little secret alcove and they swim in the lake. But then Damon is under the water for approximately 30 minutes. No, just kidding. <laughs> for approximately 15 minutes and Katie's like, is he dead? Did he leave me? What do I do? And then David comes up, he's like, eh. and she's like, what is wrong with you? I thought you were dead. I thought you had left me. He's like, um, are you an idiot? You didn't see me come up from air. Okay, sis, next time I'm not gonna care about you. I'm just gonna let you drown. That's <laughs> how Katie probably felt because he, he was so mean for no reason. Like, she was concerned about him. It was like that that scene in Descendants where Ben dives into the water and then Mal doesn't see him come up and she's like, oh my goodness, what has happened? And then, from her anger, she almost like trips and falls, but then Damon saves her before she dies and I'm like, yes, true love. And as they walk back, this is when Katie first meets Matthew and Matthew and David are like... And then, once again, lightning, storm clouds, ah, oh, like, the entire ten yards. And then Kate's like, yep, going inside because it's raining. And then as soon as Matthew and Damon step inside, like, the storm subsides. The next time Damon and Katie are talking, they're talking about books. And she's like, yeah, ghosts are cool, but aliens just aren't that attractive. And I'm just like, irony, because cut to book two. Oh, spoilers. 
So then Damon and Katie are spending more time together. This is a time where they go on the hike. And on this hike, Damon tells her the story of Snowbird, where Snowbird is trying to find her equal spouse. And in order to test them, she makes them climb up the mountain with her. And at the last second, one of them is about to fall. And Snowbird saves him. And they get married and whatnot. And Katie's like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. I thought she was going to let him fall, and that would have been terrible. And I was like, yes, that is great. And that's when you can see, like, their emotions becoming amazing. And then that opens up the conversation for Damon to get all deep. And it's like, ooh, never seen this side of him before. Until a bear comes in and is about to kill them. And Katie's like, oh my gosh. And she closes her eyes, and then there is a bright flash, and Katie passes out. Next thing you know, she's on the swing. It's drizzly. It's drizzling slash quasi raining. And she's on Damon on the swing. And he's like, yeah, you, you passed out. But the lightning scared the bear, so you're, you're fine. And then they're about to kiss until D comes and is like, oh, hey. <laughs> Katie, being, being a, book, a book blogger, which we love, we respect that, we stand. She decides that she's going to go to the library and get some books. And Dee's like, I think you should hold off on that, wait until I can go with you, because I can't go with you right now. And, and she's like, I'm grown, I, I can go get books. So she goes to get books. Leaving the library, it's night. Rain is coming down. She's going to get to the car. Guy stops her and says, excuse me, I need your help. I'm having car troubles. No! Lesson number one to all my viewers. Get in the car and leave! <laughs> this is how you get got. That is exactly how you get God, okay? There's nothing wrong with being a nice person, but safety comes before anything else. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're really gonna try to help this? Like, girl, get out. And he, like, attacks her, and he's like, humans are so easily manipulated and And she's like, just take my money! Just take my money! And he's like, I don't want your money. And she's like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to get out of this alive. But then Damon, boom, boom, comes out of nowhere and is like, light, light. So Damon saves Katie from the non-human creature. And he calls the, the hospital. She is transported to the hospital. While she's in and out of the loopiness, she can hear Damon and Dee talking. And basically, Dee is like, I told her not to go. I feel so bad. This is my fault. Because we don't know yet, but... The reason why she was attacked is because the magic, because the powers that Damon used to heal her left a trace on her, and that's why the Aram attacked. And then D takes Katie to the smoke hole diner, and I'm like, it's the joint, okay? It's the place where you get the lasagna, gang, gang. Everyone loves a smoke hole diner. This place is a staple in the rest of the books. A staple. It's... It's the, uh, pops to the community of West Virginia. And now, at the diner, we meet Ash, Damon's on-again, off-again, hot, flip, switch, girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend? Friend with benefit? What is she? Hmm. <laughs> and she's like, oh, hmm. You're not as cool as we are. Her haughtiness and her shoulders are very pronounced, and she obviously thinks she's better. And she probably has an English accent that I can't do right now because I'm terrible at accents. But yeah, basically, terrible meeting with Ash, and it was, ooh, but not as bad as the one coming up at the cafeteria, ooh. So then we get to school starting, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum. But as a senior year, you're probably like, let's get this over with. But anyway, so first day of school and Katie's in math class. She's talking to some people. Next thing you know, Damon swaggers in like the hot boy he knows he is. And he sits down and was like, oh my god, Damon, he's so fine. And then that pin, that pin, this is not a pin, you can tell, pokes her in the back. And they just have like this little math banter that continues for the rest of the book. And I'm like, ah, my favorite part of the entire series is this math banter. But we have to get to lunch, which also is my favorite part. Dee tells Katie, yo, Katie, sit with me at lunch. So she's, so Katie goes over with her lunch tray, her spaghetti lunch tray. And Ash 
the hottie girl is sitting on Damon's lap. Ooh. And Ash is like, I think you can tell when you're not wanted. And then Damon's like, yeah. I mean, it's obvious we don't want you here. And so you know what Katie does? Katie takes the tray of spaghetti and goes, swoop. She goes, swoop, all over their heads. And down comes spaghetti sauce, noodles, what nonsense, all over Ash, the haughty girl, and Damon. <laughs> and everyone in the cafeteria is like, I oh, know this new student didn't just do this. People were like, shocked. I was shocked. I was living. I was like, yes, Katie, this is what we wanted. This is what we needed. Show them you can't be a bully. Show them you can't be a bully if you don't want the smoke. Good job. But I'm noticing something. Katie is quite klutzy. So when she and Damon are having a little argument and she runs out in front of a freaking truck, of course he has to stop her, stop the truck with his alien powers, and boom, the secret's out. They are aliens. They are the Luxin from Lux, and they have their enemies, the Arum, and the Arum is what attacked Katie because she had the trace on her from the last time that Damon had to use the, had to use the source to scare the bear away. And now we know who we're going to face as the antagonist. We have the Arum and we have the DOD because the Department of Defense, the government, is checking up on the aliens and making sure things are going how they want it to go. And then that is when we get the revelation that Dawson was Damon and Dee's brother and he disappeared with a girl named Bethany and Damon is like, yep, da Dawson and Bethany fell in love and now they're dead. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to have a human get too close to another one of my siblings and one of my people because I have to protect them. And then that's when we finally start to get some emotions as to why Damon's so mean to Katie. Sure, a little unjustified. But we like to humanize people, okay? That's how you grow to love a character. But then also, Katie was right. She was smart. She was like, well, well, did you actually see the body? And David's like, I know. Mm -mm. In YA, if you don't see the body, then no body is dead. Remember that. If you don't see the body, then no body is dead. And while, they're and while they're talking about this and Katie is figuring things out, she decides to tell him about how she felt when her dad died of cancer. And then we get to see Damon and Katie be vulnerable, both with Dawson and Katie's dad, and see how their relationship is starting to blossom and it's beautiful. But then we get into Simon. And at this point I'm like, who is Simon? I don't remember Simon. Simon is a jerk, okay? He takes advantage of women, and then he wants to act like he doesn't, and then tries to say, oh, I got some, when he knows gonna have you, well, he did not. Simon, the one to watch out for, asks her to the homecoming dance, and she says, sure, I'll go. So she gets on, like, this red little a Greek dress, you know, got the low cut, and Simon is kind of an animal, not even kind of, is an animal, and he's harassing her and groping her, and it's completely inappropriate. So then Damon, finally, after they get to the uh, cornfield, or whatever field they're in, Damon pushes Simon away, freezes time, and is like, mm -mm, this is not what we do. And then Katie knees him in the groin, and yes, we have gotten rid of Simon. And it's time for Damon to take Katie home because whoosh, no. So while Damon is taking Katie home, the Aram attack and Damon's like well I have to fight them because Dee's back there so I have to do it and he gives Katie an obsidian blade and she's like what is this and then when we see the word obsidian I'm like oh the title of the book just dropped it in okay and he tells her obsidian it will kill the Aram and he says when I say run run so he's facing off three of them little little light little source he's doing the thing he takes out one, but then two people have him, but then two Aram have him, and he's about to get everything sucked out of him. So Katie runs and stabs one of the Aram and saves Damon's life. Yes. 
So now, after this battle has happened, we go back to the Black household. That is their last name, Damon and Dee and Dawson's. And everyone ha finds out Ash and her siblings, Ash, Andrew, and Adam, Matthew, who's like the chaperone of sorts, and Damon and Dee. They have to tell me that Katie is lit up on the 4th of July because I had to use the source around her and she saved my life. So they're like, well, we need to get this source off of you. And they've experimented that if you exert energy, the source will dissipate. And so in order to dissipate it the first time, David and Katie decide to have a little makeout session and uh, it gets pretty wild. So reread that if you feel like so. And so there is one Aram still left around. And Katie's talking to Dee, and is like, you know, if, if Barrett comes back, can you fight him? And I was like, wow, what a lack of confidence. Like, you really just said, are you sure you're strong enough? And now, this is when Damon calls Dee, and is like, yes, Baruch is coming. And Katie's like, well, I have to lead him away from this house because, you know, I don't want to hurt you. So, Katie makes Dee light her up and, like, source her. So, and then she drives out, and then Damon calls Katie and he's like, Are you on crack? What are you doing? Like, you are a human, you can't do anything, why would you do this? So Damon has to go find her. But in between then, um, the Aram Baruch uses his Aram abilities to open the car, trap the car, and push her out. And he's about to kill her until Damon comes. He's about to kill Damon, because then D comes and Damon has to defend D. And so everyone's like kind of on the ground like, oh my gosh, this is not going to happen. But then somehow Katie uses the energies uh, and kills Baruch. Little do we know how far these powers go until the next chat, until the next book. But she does this and yes. So now they have defeated Baruch and Damon goes over to see Katie and the back of her neck will tingles and I'm like, <gasps> This is their connection! Oh, we're getting into it where they're connected! And I was like, this is great. And then Damon's like, I love you. And Katie's like, no you don't. And he's like, yeah, I love you. And I'm gonna let you know how much I love you. And that's where we end off with the book. So yeah, not gonna lie. This book was so good, I read the next book the day after in like six hours. So the next one's gonna come out real soon. This is my review of my reread of Obsidian and next I'll be rereading Onyx. I keep forgetting that it's not Opal but it's Onyx by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So yeah, I'll see you next time when I continue rereading the Lux Chronicles. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're looking for something to tie yourself over, you can watch my Descendants 3 book tag or my Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare book review. Bye!